Hello everybody, my name is Leather Jackie Guy, and welcome to an overview of some new cars from Athern. These are 50 foot FMC offset double door box cars. And initially I was not going to buy any of these cars as, well, I they're quite outside of my modeling range of 1946 to 51. And while probably the Eureka and Western is the closest one that would see any service near the Cascade Division on the SP, I also liked the Sierra Railroad paint scheme, but I decided not to get any of these cars. But after they sat around for a couple of days, I eventually cracked and bought two road numbers of the cars I was most interested in. And if you would like to know a bit about the history of these cars and many other cars from around that same time, I'd highly recommend checking out Amtrak Guy 365's video that he did on boxcars of the 70s and kind of the... I guess you could really only call it shenanigans that were going on and the subsequent fall of a lot of these cars into disuse. However, let's take a look at Atherin's model real quick and then we'll run it. So here is one of the Sierra Railway cars and unfortunately I did have a problem with it straight out of the box and I'll be showing the pictures right now. It, basically, it came where the body was not fully attached to the frame of the car, so in case you're interested, this is what the inside of them looked like. And it's not too big of a deal since there was no damage to the car otherwise, well, any damage at all, except it wasn't, I guess, more or less assembled properly. But there was no damage to the car, so I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, getting back to the actual model itself, uh, its detail is actually pretty good, at least I think. I'm not a big fan that the doors are actually molded on. They do not actually open, which I think is a little bit kind of dumb for a $25 model. And this is basically the same molding they've been using forever, except it has gone up in price because reasons. Uh, all the logos on the car are quite good. I'll be showing some close-ups of the Sierra Railroad Company Jamestown? Is that what it says? Yeah, Jamestown, California logo, which I've never seen outside of these cars and I think a few of their locomotives, if I'm not mistaken. But the car is very nice, although it does have the typical Atherin things of the roof paint. While at least it is square, I feel like it's not supposed to look like that. I don't think they would paint the edges of the roof like this, but I could be wrong. Anyway, with this car looked at, let's move on to one of the Eureka and Western cars. And here is the Eureka and Western car. This one I think I was arguably more excited about, mainly because I'm a big fan of the movie of Emperor of the North, and I have actually been in the cab of a, I believe it's a 90-ton logging Mikado, and I believe the 19 is also a 90-ton, and the one out in Skunk Valley the Skunk Valley Train, or whatever it's called, is actually a 70-ton. Anyway, the boxcar, I mean, it's on the same level of detail as the Sierra Railroad one, and I'll put up some close-ups of both the logo, the roof, and some of the other parts of the car. But a few of you may be noticing that it kind of looks like the car is leaning to the left, and that is because the shell is not on the chassis properly. This was the same problem I had with the CR Railway car, and pulling this car straight out of its box, it has the same one, although this one hasn't uh, fallen into two pieces yet, and I will fix that, but I just want to show you guys that, uh, I will also be putting some close-ups, but that this is how the cars came out of their boxes. I'm not making this up for drama or anything, this is just how they came out. And I'm actually kind of surprised because these cars came out on time. If these were like real late, I could kind of understand, you know, let's just get them out the door. But this is just how they came. And I'll actually show you guys on camera here. Underneath, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but yes, uh, let's see on the end here. I'll do it this way. So as you can see, it's not straight. All you have to do is just... pop it in, and then the car's fine. Not a real big deal, and to be honest, I wouldn't return the cars because of it. Especially since once you pop the chassis in properly, the cars are just fine. And I'm not going to be showing you the two other road numbers that I have of both these cars because, well, they're just different road numbers of the same cars. Let's get to actually running these on the layout. And I have something special for that.
Alright, so when I said I had something special, this is what I meant. I did a review of this SD38 a long time ago, and maybe I'll redo it, but I am going to be showing a few different short-line cars predominantly, as this is the only really short-line locomotive I have, as I believe I is coming out with some more SD38s, but they're in best form like you, and I probably won't get them. Anyway, with that being said, I have a short freight train assembled with the new cars. Let's have a look at them, enjoy them, and maybe we'll see some other locomotives. And with the cars at a halt here, thank you guys so much for watching, and since you've made it this long into the video, we're going to do something a little more special.